Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, I'm the Bald Explorer and I'm out exploring the Way and Arran Canal. The Way and Arran Canal is halfway to being restored and it used to be the canal that would take um, barges from London, from the Thames, right the way down to Littlehampton on the coast. And the Way and Arran Canal was a part of that na navigation. There was the, the River Way, the River Arran, the Arran navigation, and then there was the Way and Arran navigation, the canal. And I'm standing at part of it by a lock and a bridge at Drunjwick. And I'm going to just show you that my little walk today is going to take us along the the old canal side but part of it's in construction and part of it is um, complete so the Way and Aaron Canal Trust the members the volunteers who are putting this together are in the process of rebuilding and reimagining the whole canal which is fantastic I'm going to tell you a bit about the canal on the walk but we just wanted to start here you can see and hopefully hear a little bit of this lock, Drunjwick, and the bridge. And this is sort of on the south part of the bit that's now open. We're going to head north and I'll show you more. A scheme to join the gap between the River Way and the River Arran first came around in 1641, though nothing came from it. Spin forward to 1810 and Britain was at war with France. Coastal shipping wasn't safe, and an inland route to take goods, gold bullion, merchandise from Portsmouth to London would have been preferable. The third Earl of Egremont started promoting the canal idea to bridge the 15-mile gap between both rivers, making it possible to link Portsmouth to London. The final canal was just under 20 miles and cost £103,000, opening in September 1816, with 23 locks and suitable for 30-ton barges. So this would have been all right, except that it took them about six years to get the canal um, dug and operating, and by that time the Napoleonic Wars had come to an end and the principal reason for having the canal to protect the goods as it made its way from Portsmouth up to London or vice versa was gone. It was also a pretty unfortunate time for canal builders because at the same time the, railroad, the railroads were just being prospected and routes were being laid down just coming up now to the Drunjwick viaduct which sounds grander than it really is it's not like um, the big viaducts at uh, Pont Casalti but um, in order to cross the River Arran they had to do something so that the canal barges could get across and and here it is it looks like a, a small channel really that's no more than a lock but it does suffice between the 1790s and 1810, there was a canal mania, a speculative frenzy to build waterways in order to transport heavy goods across the country. So much easier in a barge on water than by cart on rutted roads and boggy lanes. So the canal opened in 1816. Uh, by 1870, it was by an act of parliament abandoned. It didn't last terribly long unfortunately and I dare say the investors including the third Earl of Egremont had lost quite a bit of money in the process. However it is part of our nation's history and in the 1970s the what became the Way and Aaron Canal Trust decided that they would attempt the very ambitious task of restoring the canal and I remember living in Horsham that this was going on in the 70s well we're 45 years more or less um, on from that and as I say some sections of the canal are actually uh, open and they're very beautiful as you can see 
to walk in and some of the locks are operational and they do do pleasure rides down them. I think it'll still be an age before they complete the whole navigation. The railways posed a huge threat to canal operators. To take goods from Portsmouth to London in the heydays by canal took four days. A horse pulled the barge at a steady pace, but delays could occur if there was flooding or a drought and the water was too low, or in the winter when ice impeded travel and froze up the locks. Just as there had been a canal mania, there too was a rush to invest in steam travel and seen as a far better investment. In fact, rail companies bought up the canal companies and sometimes infilling the canal and running their tracks in their place. I read um, an old book published in, I think, 1868 about a character called J.B. Dashwood, who, his book was called um, The Thames to the Solent by canal and by sea. And it, he was taking a, a boat, a small boat, down to the coast to Littlehampton. And he navigated his way from the river way onto the Arran and Way Canal and then down to Littlehampton and his, his, his boat is the sort of the adventures and scrapes that he got into which um, was quite fascinating reading. I was particularly interested in the reading obviously uh, of the Arran and Way or the Way and Arran Canal um, and he said back then in 1868, 67 whenever it was that he was uh, actually doing the journey, he, um, he said as he got through the other side of Loxwood, which is in West Sussex, which is close to where we're, I'm now walking, um, it was right at the end of the life of the canal and nothing was travelling through there. And he said uh, that there were weeds growing in the canal. It was uh, quite, a, quite perilous in places and uh, he had to cut them out the way so that he could get his little boat through. Um, and in patches as you come to the end of the canal, you can sort of see that it's what it must have been like when the canal had really come to a sorrowful state. Such a shame. But now, as you can see here, although this bit isn't in everyday use and it's got a little bit of greenery on the top, it is slowly all coming back to its um, original use and, and opening up for pleasure boats. And I'm, th I'm thrilled to see it. For quite some time after the canals had ceased operating, the old navigations became clogged up with weeds, emptied of water, or just stagnant stretches seen as an eyesore and a scourge on the landscape. But interest in reviving the canals to their former glory occurred in the 1960s, especially on the Way and Arran Canal after P. A. L. Vine wrote his well-known work London's Lost Route to the Sea, mapping out the forgotten canal and showing, in photographs, its deplorable state. The 70s saw a huge outcry and various trusts were set up to rectify that abandonment. The Way and Arran Canal Trust are clearly one such that are doing sterling work. Well clearly I need to come back and I need to do um, a video about the Way and Arran Canal much more in detail and properly. But as a little walk, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you'll join me again on another one. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already and make a comment, I'd love to hear from you. So until the next time, thanks for watching, goodbye.